Well, Irma, I thank you very much for the uh, kind introduction. I'm blushing a little bit, but you read it exactly the way my mother wrote it. So uh, I, I, I can't tell you how excited I am to be here in addition to uh, that kind welcome. And by the way, the welcome has been extended equally by many people throughout the day. Really have enjoyed being here. But uh, I'm all the more honored and energized, quite frankly, by what I have learned about JPS. Now, as a person who has been a full-time health futurist for a little more than 20 years, I have a crystal ball view. In fact, I truly have a crystal ball on my work desk in my office. You might think that's sort of uh, passe, but actually it's very high-tech. It's wireless. <laughs> and uh, um, with this crystal ball view, as I look into that little sphere, I have a particular set of perspectives that I take and I'm often in the search for quotes that explain what I do as a health futurist. And one of my favorites uh, by someone unknown is that a good forecaster is not smarter than everybody else. He merely has his ignorance better organized. And I do have the luxury of working for a large company that pays me to contemplate all of the trends in health care and politics and uh, the underlying health care needs of the population. I get to organize those and uh, share them with audiences like you. Bringing that down to the specific task of uh, forecasting where we might go, I really like Harold Cleveland's quote, excuse me, Harlan Cleveland's quote, when he said not too many years ago, if we can't know for sure what will happen, we can already make a good guess about something more important, why it will happen. And in the 20 plus years that I have self-designated my task as looking at the future of healthcare, I've done a lot of research about the periods just before the big changes happened. I've really been captivated by this idea of understanding the momentum that ultimately catapulted us into a new and different healthcare system of the type uh, for which you are preparing. And so please understand that I'm always looking for those trends that suggest what's to come based on the kinds of changes that made things different in the past. Now, the past is very clearly a foundation. I'm not here tonight as a futurist to tell you that we're suddenly going in totally new and different directions and you won't recognize the old healthcare system. I'm very much uh, taken by the spirit of something William Faulkner said, the past isn't dead, it isn't even past. So you're going to continue building on that very proud 99, soon to be 100 year heritage of JPS and you can, I see, with great pride move forward. Uh, again, your energy, your momentum is, is uh, truly energizing to me. But before I look at the future of healthcare, I want to leave you with a little poetry. And uh, just as David ended his speech with a quote from one of the great minds of Great Britain, I will do the same to start mine. T.S. Eliot, in one of his uh, famous poems, once said, the end precedes the beginning, and the end and the beginning were always there before the end and after, or before the beginning and after the end. Now, are you all confused? Good, then that, I've made my point perfectly because I am confused by the future of healthcare. It's interesting, I have the luxury of devoting my full-time career to it, and it takes me an enormous amount of time and effort just to stay confused about where we are heading. So I like that T.S. Eliot quote. But behind this view, I want to share with you my particular approaches for looking at the future, because I spent all those years in school learning more and more about less and less till the point that I knew absolutely everything about nothing. Um, I, uh, I'm very well trained in making predictions, and predictions are statements of what will happen when based on an extrapolation from the past data. If you assume that there are ordered linear relationships in the databases of the past, then you can simply use something like multiple regression analysis or an exponential smoothing technique or a quadratic equation to find the equation that best fit the data in the past and extrapolate that out into the future. Now, that's what I've taught for many of those years that I was a professor at a couple of medical schools and the like, is how to make statements of what will happen when. But, quite frankly, I began to realize about 20 years ago that at any given point in time, we're really struggling. We're dealing with the latest changes in Medicare and Medicaid and the new disease that's just hit Tarrant County and the uh, um, changes in graduate medical education. We're always fighting something that seems to make things look pretty bleak. 
And yet, I have a very optimistic view of the future of healthcare. I really believe that we are getting better. And indeed, that's certainly borne out by the kinds of data that David shared with you in just a moment. Some really exciting trends, but always just having come out of a period when we were challenged.